Genesis 41. Joseph has shown terrific proficiency in interpreting dreams, which really means that, like psychics, he's just really good at making stuff up and getting one of his buddies stabbed in the face. He's so good that Pharaoh now wants him interpreting his dreams. When two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile when out of the river there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows, ugly and gaunt, came up out of the Nile and stood beside those on the riverbank. And the cows that were ugly and gaunt ate up the seven sleek, fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. The cows ate all the other cows. That's cannibalism. That's cannibalism. That was stupid. Why are we acting like this is a bad omen? The gaunt cows, the hungry ones, ate the larger cows. I mean, so what? If all those cows were gonna be slaughtered anyway, why should we be upset if the hungry cows got there first? Let them have some meat before they're all killed for meat. That first sentence is really something though. After two years, Pharaoh had a dream. What was he doing for two years? Not dreaming? Is that even possible? Or maybe he had dreams and they didn't matter. Just like this one. He fell asleep again and had a second dream. Seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads. Then Pharaoh woke up. It had been a dream. Oh, that was a dream? Glad they told me. I never would have guessed. I can't even picture this one. Some translations say this was seven ears of corn. That's even harder to imagine. The thin corn ate the healthy corn. It's corn. It's not sentient. Can someone get Pharaoh some drugs or adult content so he has more interesting dreams? Is it weird that Joseph also had a dream about grain? His dream was about everyone being obedient to him. Pharaoh's dream is about grain, grit, gran, granibalism. That was stupid. In the morning, his mind was troubled. So he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams but no one could interpret them for him. He sent for the magicians? Why? So they could pull seven rabbits out of a hat? How hard is it to interpret stuff? You can say anything. Well, Pharaoh, this just means you're amazing and your enemies will be devoured. They're magicians. Their whole thing is creating illusions. How could it possibly be hard for them to tell a fake story that's still convincing? That's literally their job. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, Today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Pharaoh was once angry with his servants, and he imprisoned me and the chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. And things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position, and the other man was impaled. That's a very long way of saying, just get Joseph. Joseph does this sort of thing. Also, my friend is dead. You killed him. And look at the chief cupbearer. It took a couple of years, but he finally remembered Joseph. So all that dream interpreting from the last chapter paid off. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. They went down to fetch Joseph and said, Dude, we need you upstairs to interpret Pharaoh's dream, and oh my god, look at you. Let's get you a shower first, maybe some new pants. Can't have you making stuff up looking like that. Here's some literary analysis for you. When Joseph was lowered into the water pit, his brothers removed his robe, his finest article of clothing. But now, as he's raised from the pit of the dungeon, he gets fancy new clothes. It all comes full circle. What does that mean? I don't know. 
what am I, a magician? Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Look at that cockiness! Mwah! Humble little me sucks at interpreting dreams. But give me a chance and God will speak through me. So don't question anything I say, no matter how stupid it sounds, or else you're really just angering the Lord. That also means if Pharaoh hates the interpretation, Joseph has plausible deniability. You know, don't blame me, I'm just the messenger. Now, a normal book would jump right to Joseph interpreting the dreams. But this is the Bible, the worst book ever written. So Pharaoh is going to repeat his stupid dreams. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, in my dream, I was standing on the bank of the Nile, when out of the river there came up seven cows, fat and sleek, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows came up, scrawny and very ugly and lean. I had never seen such ugly cows in all the land of Egypt. The lean, ugly cows ate up the seven fat cows that came up first. But even after they ate them, no one could tell that they had done so. They look just as ugly as before. Then I woke up. What's with the commentary? There were these ugly cows. Super ugly. Then the ugly cows ate the fat cows, but they were still ugly. Yeah, that's how it works. Eating one meal doesn't change your outward appearance. In my dream, I saw seven heads of grain, full and good, growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads sprouted, withered and thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven good heads. I told this to the magicians, but none of them could explain it to me. I had a weird dream, and I asked the football team what it meant, and they didn't know. Of course they didn't. That's not their job. Why would magicians be any better at psychoanalysis? But okay, Joseph... Let's hear what God has to say. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven lean, ugly cows that came up afterward are seven years, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It does not take God to do all this. Joseph just takes a number and he changes it to time. Oh, three branches? That means three days. Oh, seven ugly cows? That's totally seven years. I wonder if he paused before speaking. Did he milk the moment like a sketchy televangelist? Oh, oh, that, that's a tough dream. Wow, oh, it'll take a miracle to interpret it. Wait, 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 something's coming to me. I can feel it working. I hope you have your checkbook ready. Seven years is enough time that Joseph may be able to get the hell out of there in case he's wrong. Way smarter than saying seven days and having the lie catch up to him. It is just as I said to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten, and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God, and God will do it soon. It was so obvious. Ugly cows equals famine. Thin heads of grain equals famine. That's like living in southern Florida and saying everyone's bad dreams means there's a hurricane coming. You won't go wrong. Look at those last lines. You had two similar dreams because the famine is super duper coming. Yeah, that's it. Don't like it? Blame God. But Joseph isn't done yet. He's clever. He's setting himself up for success and he'll say anything not to go back to the dungeon. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. 
Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. Joseph's like, raise taxes now so we can have a budget surplus. We're going to need it. And make sure you have someone smart and wise and me and put him in charge. What he's suggesting, though, isn't rocket science. If there's a famine in the future, of course you should save up food now. You're telling me no one else could have figured that out? None of the magicians? The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, Can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? Yeah, can we find anyone like Joseph, the guy standing right here? Do we have anyone like him around? You know Joseph's looking around like he totally doesn't know what's coming. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace, and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. The plan worked. He'll get to shave every day now. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. He had him ride in a chariot as his second in command, and people shouted before him, Make way! Thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Joseph is now in charge of Egypt, and all he's doing is riding shotgun in a chariot, wearing expensive clothes and jewelry, and doing no real work. He is everything wrong with government. Hey, I had a dream in which two ugly cows ate two very rich and lazy cows. What does that mean, Joseph? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift hand or foot in all Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name zaphnath paneah and gave him Asenath, daughter of Potipharah, priest of On, to be his wife. And Joseph went throughout the land of Egypt. Wow, I was totally going to name my next kid Zaphonath Paneah. That would have been awkward. Once again, we are introduced to a woman who has no real identity other than she's now the property of a man. We're not told of any consent. We're not told her age. We're not told if she even likes Joseph. So typical. And wait, when Joseph was sold into slavery, he was sold to Potiphar, whose wife... I don't know her name, so let's just call her Becky Falwell, tried seducing him. And now he's marrying the daughter of Potiphera, who's apparently a completely different guy. How do you have names like Zaphonath Pania and still find a near duplicate? Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. What a crappy way to spend your 30s. You have no kids. You have a new wife. Go travel. Go be interesting. This guy's just walking around collecting grain. And then when he's done, he just keeps collecting grain. Before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph by Asenath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, It is because God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. The second son he named Ephraim, and said, It is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. What? 
You're having kids before the famine? That's like getting pregnant nine months before the pandemic. It's the worst possible time. And Joseph knew what was coming. What the hell is he doing? The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began, just as Joseph had said. There was famine in all the other lands, but in the whole land of Egypt there was food. When all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph and do what he tells you. Just feed them, Pharaoh. This isn't complicated. You don't need a right-hand wise man to figure this out. When the famine had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe throughout Egypt. And all the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph, because the famine was severe everywhere. Leave it to a wealthy leader to sell grain to his own people during a famine. Just give it to them! They grew it, you took it, just give it back! Stop trying to profit from it just so you can buy another chariot. And really? All the world came to Egypt? How? Did the Australians take a plane? What if you couldn't make it to Egypt? That would mean God just killed off a whole bunch of people. This is like a quiet genocide. And that's not even the focus of this story because Joseph is just getting rich by selling them the grain they grew. Joseph is really the quintessential con man. He saved his own life and got rich by telling people with more power exactly what they wanted to hear. Then he collected food from people and is now selling it back to them. What's next? Is he gonna open up a sham university and start selling steak? 